In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate a hypothesis test for a single mean. So let's first read the example. It says a large hunting and fishing store carries a new energy efficient engine for a small fishing boat. They claim that the engine will run continuously for more than three hours or 180 minutes on a single gallon of regular gasoline. A simple random sample of 30 engines is selected for testing. The engines run for an average of 190 minutes with standard deviation of 15 minutes. Test the null hypothesis that the mean run time is 180 minutes against the alternative hypothesis that the mean run time is more than 180 minutes. Use a 0.1 significance level. All right, so let's see how we're gonna do this. So the very first thing we need to do is let's identify some of the pieces from the problem. So it tells us that we selected a simple random sample of 30 engines. So this tells me there were 30 engines in my sample and n is equal to 30. The engines run for an average of 100, 190 minutes with a standard deviation of 15 minutes. So this tells me that the mean from my sample was 190 and that the standard deviation from my sample is equal to 15 minutes. All right, so we've got the information we need. So we're gonna go through each of the five steps. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our sample size check. So there were 30 engines in the sample. Therefore, the sample size requirement is met. And this is because there we in order for to satisfy the sample size requirement for a mean, we need at least 30. We've got 30 engines, so we're good to go. All right, so next, oh, and actually let's put that in here. The sample size requirement is met since there are at least 30. Okay. Once we've checked our sample size requirement, we're going to set up our hypotheses. And this question pretty much tells us what they are. It says, we're going to test the null hypothesis that the mean run time is 80 minutes. So remember, when we're setting up our hypotheses, we always want the null and the alternative. So in this case, the population mean is equal to 180 under the null against the alternative that the mean run time is more than 180 minutes. So we've got mu greater than 180. Our next step is to calculate our test statistic. So we're working with a t distribution or a t statistic since we're working with a mean and our formula is going to be x bar minus mu naught divided by s divided by the square root of n. Now mu naught, what that comes from, notice the only other place we see this subscript zero is in the null hypothesis. So mu naught is always going to be equal to the value of the parameter that you see in the hypotheses. So our x bar we already identified as 190. The value in the hypotheses is 180. S is 15. And there were 30 engines in our sample. So 90 minus 180 is 10. And then you'll want to take in your calculator and type in 15, divide it by the square root of 30. And you'll want to take this out to four decimal places. So now we've got 10 divided by 2.7386. And your test statistic, you're always going to round to two decimal places. Sorry, correction to what I was just saying. When we work with Z, we're going to go to two decimal places. When we work with T, we go to four. So 3.6515. All right, so now we're gonna find our p-value. So 
So drawing our picture, we're going to just draw a t distribution. And our t's are always centered at zero. So this is a t distribution. And there were 30 engines in the sample, so we're going to have 29 degrees of freedom. And notice this is a right-tailed test. So my test statistic here is 3.6515. And I need the area in the right tail. So to find this area, we're actually going to use a T table. And the T table isn't as exact as the standard normal table. It's going to give us a range for this area. So let's look at how to find that. And again, notice our test statistic is 3.6515. So going to our T table. First thing I'm going to do is identify, that's from an old video, let's erase that out. All right, so we need 29 degrees of freedom. And again, going back, the test statistic we're interested in is 3.6515. 3.6515. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along this line here, and I'm going to find the value that is closest to 3.6515. So going across, keep on going, okay, notice that 3.6515 falls in between these two numbers right here on the degrees of freedom equal to 29 line. So now what I'm going to do is going up to the top, looking right here, notice that the first line tells me the areas for a one tail and the second line tells me the areas for a two tail. Well anytime you have a left or a right tail that's the only one tail you're interested in and so we have a right tail test here so this tells me that my p-value is somewhere in between 0 0.001 and Sorry, I've got 0 0.001, and my p-value is somewhere between it and 0 0.0005. So this notation, what this is saying, is the p-value is somewhere bigger than 0 0.005 and less than 0 0.001. So the way that these are listed up here is they're listed as they're decreasing. So when we write out our answers, we want to flip the order that they're in. So going back, we have using the t-table. We found that the p-value was somewhere between 2 numbers. And notice here that the p-value is somewhere between these two numbers. So that means the very largest it could be, or it's going to get close to 0 0.001. So it's somewhere in between these. But all we really care about is its relationship to alpha. And so alpha in this case is 0 0.10. So therefore, the p-value is less than 0 0.10, which is equal to alpha, and that's what we really care about. And again, that's because the largest the p-value could be was 0 0.001, so that has to be less than 0 0.10. So now we can make our conclusion, and our conclusion says at the 10% significance level, we have enough evidence to conclude that the average runtime time of the engines is greater than 180 minutes.